Loretta, um, I'll stop presenting and over to you. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. This is fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and do my screen share and then find the right screen. Uh, mm -hmm. Do opt share sound, optimize all the good things. Okay. Can you see Yuri's night on the screen? Brilliant. Thanks, Ray. Yeah. Emco. Perfect. Um, so let's start off with that because that's at the top of my mind because it's in a week and I'm super excited because it's our biggest Yuri's night ever. We're doing a global live stream all around the planet, uh, kicking off at 3 p.m. Pacific. So it's it's almost reasonable in the UK for you know for your late partying owls. I love it. Um, and though the back end that we're using, um, we have for, for 24 hours. So we may just be that we invite the UK events and the uh, the um, Moscow event. I'm really excited. One of our ISU alumni is hosting a really cool Moscow event with lots of cosmonauts, and have them on the back end. So anyway, we might be an all day thing that you can join in. So that'd be really fun. Uh, wait, I have to click, oops. Okay, that worked. Okay, so that's me and my husband, now husband George. We were only uh, colleagues when we started Yuri's Night and a, and a year into it, I, uh, I asked him out on a date and that went really well. So now we're married. Um, Yuri's Night celebrates the conjunction of the anniversaries of the first human to go into space, Yuri Gagarin and the first, okay. So yeah, so then the first space shuttle took off April 12th, 1981. Uh, 20 years later to the day after Yuri's historic flight. Uh, and we just got video for the first time from the commander, uh, the pilot of STS-1 saying, yeah, it was just a coincidence. We weren't even paying attention. We, you know, we weren't trying to do that. It's kind of funny. Anyway, in 2001, we started um, uh, Yuri's night. So it's our, tw it's our 20th anniversary this year, big party. This is our event in 2007. It was a huge rave at NASA Ames in Silicon Valley, which was really fun. It was like Burning Man meets NASA. Uh, in 2014, after the shuttles retired and moved to LA and Florida, we started hosting events under the shuttle. Um, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I like to throw in my cosplay, my costuming, I like to throw in some, some Star Wars. We had Buzz Aldrin come in 2016, which was super fun. And then last year, because of COVID, we had to take everything online, but that made it fun because we could have people like uh, Chris Hadfield just beam in from Canada, uh, Soyun Yi beam in from Seattle, and uh, Scott Kelly and, and Bob Weir of the Grateful Dead could just hang out in their living rooms, drinking beers and talking about space music, which was phenomenal. Uh, we had Bill Nye show up. Uh, it was just a great event. So um, at the very end, my end slide is about how to get involved this year, uh, get tickets or just watch the live stream. Or if you need to go to bed, you can watch the live stream the next day. But we have an incredible lineup. Uh, we have Bill Nye is gonna be back. We've added Sir Richard Branson, which we're really excited about. Um, we have, a, a slew of astronauts. We have the ESA astronaut, um, Luca Parmitano, gonna be hanging out with Richard Garriott. They're gonna be swapping space stories. They're gonna be doing like a drinking, drinking cocktails, swapping their, you know, oh, but remember that time when you almost drowned in the spacesuit? Um, so that's gonna be super fun. Um, we're gonna have a UK future astronaut for the Virgin Galactic, uh, Trevor Beatty, who's, uh, I love him. He's one of my favorites. He's gonna be on with, um, NASA astronaut Katie Coleman and Mountaineer Mount National Geographic Explorer and woman who summited from Bangladesh, who summited the seven summits, Waspia Nasreen. She's amazing. Am I talking way too fast? I'm trying to get everything into 12 minutes. So, okay. Um, let's see. We also have OK Go, the band. They did a, a flight in zero G and they filmed a music video in zero G. So we're going to be giving them the Spirit of Yuri's Night Award. And they're going to be showing a new video we helped them create with submissions from around the world um, uh, called from their COVID song called All Together Now, which we're really excited about. Um, and then the after party, we have uh, the twin sisters from Australia, a fabulous world-class DJ, DJs gonna be spinning for our after party. So come buy tickets to the back end so you could be a part of all those things. We're gonna have Space Jeopardy and meet, meet and mingle, a chance to like, you can pick between your tables who you wanna go hang out with. Like, I wanna go hang out at Ramco's table. I wanna go talk to, uh, everyday astronaut and so you can sort of bop around and all kinds of fun stuff like that so um anything else on yuri's night do, do, do. and the cocktails but that's well, that's not right okay so in, in the theme of preparing for space flight i also wanted to share some of my other crazy cool adventures which is i worked for zero gravity corporation uh, part-time on the side it was sort of a weekend thing for 10 years. And so I got to do 80 flights on our plane, 
Uh, that's obviously upside down, but it gives you a sense of the weightlessness. That's me with my mom with my Yuri's Night patch floating weightless. And this was our biggest flight ever flying um, uh, Stephen Hawking. So it's an incredible way to prepare for space. And, and, and as somebody who's going to space, probably not really in the next two years, uh, I find that my weightless time really helped me uh, feel comfortable with knowing that I, I have my sea legs, I know what to do when I'm weightless. I've also been to the bottom of the ocean with uh, Titanic and Avatar director James Cameron on these mirror submersibles. Uh, we went 2,000 uh, meters, no, two miles down, 5,000 meters down. Uh, this is the sort of near the Azores on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, sort of near you. Uh, it was a ton of fun. So that was another great analog. We had a, it was a small titanium sphere with a Russian pilot. It was just like a Soyuz. Come on, it was awesome. Uh, and it was totally death defying too, because you know, a lot of the analog missions, you know, NASA sometimes does analog missions like in the basement in Houston. And I always say, no, that's, that's not an analog. Cause if you cut your finger, you can, they're just gonna open the hatch and take you to the hospital. But when you're in the middle of the Atlantic ocean, you know, you're not gonna see anyone for days. Not even the Coast Guard could get to you for three days or the Navy. So um, you're, you really, as an American, it was my first time really understanding what it's like to be off the grid and out of, out of rescue, out of far, far, too far to be rescued. Like no helicopters or anything. So anyway, uh, so I have a ticket to fly with Virgin Galactic. I can do a suborbital flight. Um, this is our hangar in New Mexico, um, which is gorgeous. It looks like it should be in a Star Wars movie. Um, and that's one of our old, old, old powered flight pictures. And, uh, and so this is the, the way I tell people to prepare for their flight. We have about three and a half minutes of weightlessness uh, at the apex of the parabola when we're up in space. And I tell people the best way to practice is to just spend three and a half minutes every day in your living room, just being totally present and overcome with awe at just the tree out the window and the air you get to breathe and the gravity holding you to your chair and just you every sense just fully just taking it all in instead of numbing it out like we normally do just like the way you would at the window of a spacecraft just like savoring every sensation every second and I think that's the best way you can prepare for space. I also teach a class on preparing for space um, called space kind training um, teach people to dream big to ask for help and to never give up because space can be hard. Um, <laughs> it's like Jedi training, but but without the copyright. Um, <laughs> and uh, we like to say that the most complex system of the spacecraft is the people that's building it. Because in all our engineering classes and all our science classes, they, there were no equations that could help us figure out how to work things out with a colleague that aren't going well or um, how to resolve differences on the team. And I, I find in my, my career that um, that's, the hardest part of rocket science and, and um, the part that really uh, has caused a lot of failures uh, and crashes in our industry. So that's what we work on. We train people and everything you do matters. The way you show up in a Zoom call, the way you look in the, in the video and like talk to people right in the camera matters. The, the, your energy level, the, the words you pick in an email, um, the way you acknowledge people, learning people's names, everything you do matters. And so really taking care, like the future of humanity depends on it and you, because it does. Um, we also, as an example, have rules like, uh, don't throw anyone under the sand crawler. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a small industry, it's a small planet. You know, we, we gotta take care of each and every, um, gotta look after each other. So the next, the next, our next new not right stuff training, thanks to COVID, it's now online and available to the world. Uh, the next one starts on May the 4th, because obviously I'm a huge Jedi fan and uh, it's uh, eight Tuesdays. They're pretty late this round. They're eight, eight p 5 p.m. Pacific, so it's not great timing for Europe, but I alternate. Um, the next round, which will probably start in August, will start at 12 noon Pacific, which is 8 p.m. Uh, UK time, which is, uh, you know, could fit uh, more schedules, I think, in, in European time. So keep your eyes open for that. You can go to um, spacekind.org uh, to, to sign up whenever I get those dates figured out and on, online. Um, and then as promised, here is the slide to help you find that, go to yurisnight.net slash live stream to get your tickets or to set the reminder bell on YouTube to come back and, and watch the live stream next Saturday night. And we're, we're super excited for this epic event. And we hope that, uh, Lots of you folks in the UK and, and beyond, whoever's listening to this, I'm sure there's people all over the world, uh, can, can uh, join in the Yuri's Night movement and 
uh, help us celebrate the power of space to bring the world together. So thanks for having me and I'll open up for questions. Thank you very much, Samantha. That was a fantastic um, talk. Uh, we did have a uh, question in the um, in the comments actually from um, Space Girl Heidi, uh, and the question is: um, What is the uh, easiest and hardest part of being a female astronaut? Oh, that's a great question. Well, the easiest part is that you're easier to remember because you're. Uh you know, one in 50 instead of one in 500. So I, I find that to be a great um, uh, advantage uh, at a conference, you know, that if, if being the only woman in the room, you know, that they were, oh yeah, I remember you, you're the only woman in the room. You're like, yeah, that's great. So um, I find that to be uh, the, the easiest part of being a woman astronaut. Um, and the hardest part, I think it's interesting because it, I remember when I first got to university, um, there was orientation and they, they sat us down and they warned us that as women, you know, we've been uh, overlooked in the math classroom and it's, we've had this difficult time. And I remember thinking, no, not me. No, I, I didn't have that. I didn't have any of that experience. Like I'd always, um, I'd gone to an all, all girls high school and I mean, we, had a, we had an all boys high school next door. So we had boys, but I didn't have to compete. And I always felt empowered by all my teachers to go into math and science. And so I'd never experienced um, what so many people have described of being held back. And so this was sort of a news to me at university that, that, uh, that being a woman could be a challenge. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That was news. Um, and what's, but, but what's been interesting is lately as I'm older, I, I turned, I turned 47 next week. Um, I've, I, what I find to be the hardest part now is, um, the, is the glass ceiling is getting to the next level. So um, I'm really a powerful advocate now for um, having more women in the boardroom and having more women in, in leadership and in, and in government and taking roles, decision-making roles and leadership roles, running companies, CEOs, because I think we need that perspective and that balance to, to the force, obviously balance to the force. Um, that, and so uh, I think the hardest part is, is getting representation at the highest levels of of uh, leadership of, of all industries, especially ours. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, um, Loretta. Um, I can't see any more questions in the uh, comments. There's a few uh, compliments. Nice presentation. People enjoyed it. So thank you. Um,